is number 627 in your missalette. Blessed are they. Please stand and let's worship together. Again, number 627, blessed are they. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Today in our gospel, the Lord Jesus calls us to love him above all else and to rely on him and build our lives upon his grace. Desiring to heed this call, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please join in our Gloria, number 913. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you.
let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Zion, said the Lord, has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget her infant? Be without tenderness for the child of her womb? Even she should forget. I will never forget the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rest in my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be disturbed at all. Rest in God alone, my soul. Only in God be at rest, my soul, for from him comes my hope. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be disturbed. Rest in God alone, my soul. With God is my safety and my glory. He is the rock of my strength. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O oh my people. Pour out your hearts before him. Rest in God alone, my soul. Read it from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, thus should one regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Now it is, of course, required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. It does not concern me in the least that I be judged by you or any human tribunal. I do not even pass judgment on myself I am not conscious of anything against me, but I do not thereby stand acquitted. The one who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, do not make any judgment before the appointed time, unless the Lord comes. For he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will manifest the motives of our hearts. And then everyone will receive praise from God. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord Jesus said to his disciples, No one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Therefore, I tell you, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap. They gather nothing into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you more important than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single moment to your lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothes? Learn from the way the wild flowers grow. They do not work or spin. But I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was clothed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass of the field, which grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O you of little faith? So do not worry and say, What are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. The Gospel of the Lord. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Mammon was an ancient Near Eastern word for money, wealth. And it was also the name of a pagan god that was worshipped around the people of Israel, personified wealth. And that word, mammon, even more basic than money or wealth, meant security, it meant firmness, solidity, trustworthiness. And that, of course, is the great appeal of money. Money and wealth and the accumulation of it promises us security. It promises us safety and protection. It gives the illusion of firmness. That word mammon, that ancient word mammon, for wealth, for that pagan god, is related to a word that we say multiple times in every Mass, and that we say at the end of almost all of our private prayers. That word is amen. And amen, again in that original language, literally means it is firm, it is true, It is trustworthy. And we say amen to God's word, to the Eucharist, to say from our hearts that God is trustworthy. God is our security. God is our rock. Now the great question the Lord Jesus poses to us in the gospel today is to whom Do we say amen? 
What do we believe is firm, lasting, trustworthy? And as he tells us, all of us, all of us knowing that we are weak and fragile creatures, must choose on what to build our lives. We know that we need something bigger and stronger and more lasting than ourselves to prop us up. And the question is, do we turn to God or do we turn to mammon, money, power? And we have to choose one. The cruelty and the sadness of serving mammon, money, is anxiety. The surest sign that our hearts are turned ever so subtly from God to mammon is anxiety and worry. Because mammon wealth promises security, but binds us through worry. And we all know it. We think, if only I had a little bit more money, if only I had a little bit more in my retirement account, then I'd be secure, then I'd be on solid ground. And no matter how much we accumulate, no matter how much we gather into our accounts, gather into our proverbial barns, we still feel anxious and we worry and we enter into that rat race where we try to get a little more and a little more and a little more. And the chains that bind us to mammon get heavier and the anxiety and the worry get heavier. The worship of God, saying amen to God, saying that you are firm, God, you are my foundation, has an altogether different interior landscape. We know that our hearts are fixed on God when we experience peace, when we experience that trust and that security that children know in their mother's arms. And that's precisely the image that we heard in the first reading. The people of Israel are saying to themselves, because they've gotten themselves into another jam, God has forgotten us. We are lost. No one's going to take care of us. And the prophet says, speaking with the voice of God, God will not forget you. Just as a mother could not forget her child, so God will not forget about you. You can trust in him. You can build your life on him. Today, in this gospel, we're challenged to ask ourselves, on what have we built our lives? To whom do we turn for security, reliability, safety? Is it money or is it God? There was a recent headline in a newspaper. The headline ran, Billionaires experience anxiety too, comma, and no one cares. <laughs> that headline speaks to our subtle belief that money makes us secure. We don't believe the billionaires have anxiety because they have so much money. But the billionaires who've accumulated all that money know that mammon is not secure. Mammon does not feed our hearts. Mammon doesn't solve our human problems. Only God can. I invite you at this Mass and your personal prayers today, next week, and from now on. When you say amen, when you say amen before you receive the Holy Eucharist, Jesus' body and blood, when you say amen after grace at meals, that you say it and mean it as it was originally intended, that I believe you, God, are the foundation of my life. You are my security, and I want to build my life on you and you alone. May our amen today, tomorrow, and for the rest of our lives Express that, and may it be our weapon against the seduction of mammon, the seduction of false security, false 
firmness. Let us stand and together in faith profess the creed that unites us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to our loving God, who desires that we build our lives on the rock of his Christ, we lift up our prayers and petitions in confidence and in faith. That our parish, our diocese, our universal church might grow ever more trusting in the goodness and mercy of our loving God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our leaders might trust in God rather than in weapons of war or the riches they can acquire. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers everywhere, as they care for their children with tender attentiveness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children, for their safety, security, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of Father Michael, and the men and women who serve, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Dorothy Rose, who we remember in a particular way during this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, look with kindness and compassion on your holy people. Free us from the anxiety that comes from not placing you first in our lives, and fill us with hope and your promises and faith and your word. Hear and answer the prayers we offer, for we offer them in and through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our song of preparation in your missalette, number 434, Seek Ye First.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. On the night before he was, on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink.
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Rose and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church, with your servant Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. to soar like an eagle, though I may journey far away from home, I know I'll never be alone. Oh God, you i 
to soar like an eagle. Though I may journey far away from home, I know I'll never be alone. When I am done. Extend a gentle hand, and I know you understand. Oh God, your presence is real. Fly like a bird to the Lord, my soul. I want to soar.